again, like given what I've seen in terms of um, in some cases, drives being possible with pretty much no intervention in, in certain scenarios, certain like videos, like Uber drivers that are using it. It just seems like they could launch in a city in the next year or two. That, that's kind of roughly how I think of it. What was the thing that flipped for y'all that allowed you to sit down and actually, you know, in the last few weeks or months, however long it's taken to put this report together, that finally said, OK, we're ready to go. We feel like this is this is going to happen, like it or not. Self-driving cars are coming and Tesla looks like they're in the leading position to do that. What, what was the major switch? You know, I would actually go back a number of years to think of that switch point, because if you recall, um, I mean, this is like even pre-2018. I, I don't remember the exact year, but I want to say like six plus, maybe six to eight years ago. For a while, Elon Musk was saying that autonomy was so difficult that he thought the last 10 percent was such a big hurdle to cross that he wasn't actually sure whether or not that would ever happen. In other words, it wasn't always clear that Tesla was going to create a fully autonomous car. And I think once he, you know, hopped on sort of that train and said, oh, actually, this is a problem that we're going to seriously tackle and look at internally. That is when we start first started looking at it. What's changed over the past year or so, and in this most recent model update, is really just increased confidence. So last year we were saying, um, you know, two thirds of the enterprise value in 2027 could be ascribed to robo taxi. Now we're saying that's close to 90%. And it's partly, you know, because it's just that much later in the model that we, we expect the network to expand in those additional two years. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, we're, we do, our confidence has increased on the updates that we have seen come out of FSD on all the AI advances. And so, it is happening later than we initially expected and then what Elon has said and what many have forecasted. Um, but I would say it's, it's coming later, but our confidence is up. Got it. Yeah, what, what I found the most interesting about this whole thing is I think there's so little credit given. Okay, and this is like, you know, the this is all assuming that Tesla is able to reach level five, that, you know, all the miles are collecting will end up yielding a robo taxi network or, or level four, level five system or, or whatever you want to call it nowadays. The scale of that and how they're going to be able to execute it because of the decisions they made six, seven, eight years ago to put an inference computer in the car with like two thousand dollars worth of parts if that that makes the car drive itself to do it eight years ago and then moving forward they're gonna all they have to do is just update the software and maybe upgrade the chip as well it's it's like it, it always like hurts my brain when i try to have conversations about this with other folks that are like well waymo all they have to do is just put more lidar cars you know in places and then can go you know it's like it's going to be super easy you just throw throw them up there and i'm like okay guys come on like like let's sit down and it's two hundred thousand, whatever how much it costs for a waymo it's super expensive they have to map out the roads they got to hire the people to ensure that the car is doing the right thing anytime a cone gets moved from one corner to the other one you got to map it to make sure it doesn't you know run over the cone or whatever that is I just what what are your conversations with other folks like like can you help me shed some light into that like why is that such a difficult conversation to have yeah you know i, I think it's a good point because i also feel like that's not so well understood um the scale and you know i would add to that it's like it's so it's like the manufacturing capacity that tesla has because it is the actual vehicle maker they can flip this switch with some cars on the road that join the network. Um, but also, uh, when you look at and, and, and they get so much data from that, you know, over a billion miles cumulatively in FSD now on a daily basis, if you look at the whole fleet, um, compared to Waymo, we've estimated it's like roughly 100x the data collection capability. Um, but yeah, Waymo, five plus years ago, they had put in an order for something like 70,000 cars. And I'm actually a little confused at why they haven't expanded their fleet more than they have today. And I want to give them credit because they, they launched first. I mean, they were doing this back in 2019. It's just sure. um, getting to scale has proven to be a different question. So I'm not quite sure what has happened with their discussion with automakers. And I mean, they do have a Geely partnership. Um, you know, clearly they're working on it, um, but it, it does seem harder to do than this vertically integrated model that we're seeing with Tesla for sure. Yeah, I was curious with where y'all are at now on like just the confidence you have said in your model that basically you're you're predicting almost 100% likelihood that 
Tesla launches a commercial robo taxi service at scale before 2027. And so what is it about that time frame? Like why 2025 or 2026? Uh, why are those such high confidence years for you compared to, you know, it, it being able to push out a little bit further than that even? Yeah, well, I think um, it's really so many things that we sort of calibrate internally. It's, um, I mean, one, I think, again, you can't overlook the advances that we've seen happen in AI. And often these things happen overnight and it's like somewhat un unsuspected humans are not that good at predicting like the timing of the next AI breakthrough um and actually even we have this chart in our big ideas deck where it, like zooming out a bit if you look at artificial generalized intelligence um the the time to the, the number of years to that happening that experts have been predicting as we've seen these AI advances over the past year has shrunk pretty dramatically I mean you could just see it's like a downward um you know uh, a downturn there in terms of like the the distance to it. So it, something's happening largely, and I that has to benefit autonomous driving. And we're seeing evidence of that already. I mean, some of the like, you know, um, transformers were popularized by large language models, then Tesla was using them for a while, unclear whether they're using them as aggressively now in their current structure. Um, but we've seen that bleed through. Uh, the other thing is, you know, and as you all know, because you drive Teslas and you you use the software, um, the videos that I'm seeing come out, like particularly in places like California where the software works really well, you're already seeing drives where someone can take their hands off the wheel, no interventions, um, or near no interventions where it, it seems like a solvable problem in some scenarios. I know Tesla wants to launch nationally, but let's just think like, what do they need in order to launch this service in one city? And they seem kind of close to doing that given current functionality. And I'm not going to say it's perfect. It's not. I, I see I see all the complaints that people have and the instances where it's still messing up. And then, okay, like is regulation going to be a problem? Well, if you look at the data that Tesla put out, um, I really want them to update this statistic. And we heard Elon talk about it a little bit. There's a last year they put out a stat, the miles between FSD interventions. And I adjusted that to look at just um, surface streets or city streets because at the time that stack wasn't working on the highway. And it looked roughly five times safer than the data that Tesla publishes for human driven Teslas, you know, in their safety report. So, and then, you know, now Elon's saying he sees line of sight to that being, you know, one intervention every like once a year or not even a year. Um, so that would equate to like a four X improvement on that. So, I think that it looks like they can statistically show regulators now that this works. Um, so I'm less concerned about that as a hurdle. So it becomes like more of an execution question, I think. If the technology looks like it's there, we're seeing early, early signs that I, I think it's solvable. It's just like, when will they do it? What will the setup look like? What will the back end look like? For me, the, the light bulb went off when it was actually two different instances. The first one was uh, my favorite test for FSD, the wife test which is twofold. So the one was the passenger. So my wife went from literally trying to kill me for turning this on. Like, what are you doing, you crazy person? Why do you keep turning this thing on? To being like, she would prefer me turn it, turning it on and turning it off. And then her using the vehicle uh, on the road with FSD on with her behind the wheel. Because before she was hesitant to use it. And now she's been... Uh, looking forward to use. And the reason why I use her as an example, it's it's more about the fact that she's not this crazy psycho tech person like I am that's like obsessed about this stuff, right? She's just a casual. She's a casual person that just wants to have things that make her happy and have a more, have convenience around the things that she does, right? And so that was one thing that I saw. I was like, okay, cool. So we're going somewhere, right? And to, tr to try and bias away from my biases and to try and get some real world exposure to this. So that was a very small thing. And this is on top, of course, of all the videos and all the data that's out there. And then the second one was when they released V12 and it went from this software stack that had uh, it was making progress, but it had a lot of these like little corner cases. You know, this turn is weird. This stop sign stop is weird. This left turn at this light is weird. The way it handled pedestrians is weird. And then V12 came out with a brand new stack that they were working on in earnest for maybe like a year, like the actual end-to-end -end neural network process that they had set up. And then with a one-year-old stack, they wiped out tens, if not hundreds of these little things that I was you know, getting tired of. And then 
all of a sudden you have a thing that's like not only uh, uh, just as good as the previous version, but better in a fraction of the time it took to develop the previous six to seven years with hardware that's six to seven years old. And then when that, I'm like, okay, so of course, so, so what do we think the end result's going to be here, y'all? Like, it's this, this seems like an, like an obvious place. And so the only thing that I can think of that could derail this whole thing is that AI advancements and where they're going as far as leveraging neural networks and how they can make things be potentially 10, 20, 100 times safer or better than a human, that's not a reality, right? Like, that's somehow not true but I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that. Actually, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about all the crap I just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, well, first, I mean, I'm with you. So, so for me, it's, it's, it's the opposite relationship. It's like my husband is driving and he's, he's talking, he looks over at me and I'm like, okay, let's continue this conversation in FSD, you know, like, please put it on before you get animated and take your hands off the wheel. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think that I, you know, and I, I do think that it, it does. I live in New York City. So um, when there were certain certainly times where well, one, it's like using it in bumper to bumper traffic is a different scenario and cars are really aggressive and you got to yield to cabs. So, um, you know, I still I still think that there I see things that could be worked on there, but it's way smoother than it's ever been in the past. And I can drive to my parents house in Connecticut um, with pretty much no interventions. I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't done a full door to door drive yet, but, um, cause it's more of a comfort thing sometimes when I take over, but, um, I feel like it's, it's gotten a lot better at that. Um, but I mean, I think, yeah, another thing that we, we, that I, I didn't mention, you know, and, and you talked about these model updates that Tesla's making, like they, uh, they've also said that they aren't, um, compute constrained anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, that now the constraint is these like validation drivers that are the humans that test the software before they release it to people to um, you know car owners and it's actually hard to find an inter an intervention event to know whether the software is better than the last release because they're becoming so infrequent. So I feel like that's another sign. Um, and so yeah, it's it's definitely like it's it's somewhat. Um, of a, an art and a science here, estimating when the exact release date is going to be. And I, I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm perfect and I know that it's going to happen this month. Um, right. But I, I, it just feels like it, it should, again, like given what I've seen in terms of um, in some cases drives being possible with pretty much no intervention in in certain scenarios, certain like videos, like Uber drivers that are using it. It just seems like they could launch in a city in the next year or two. That that's kind of roughly how I think of it. I agree with you 100. percent I think the other thing too about this, which is like when I when I listen to the discourse around can Tesla even do this? Like Waymo, the the way Tesla is approaching it is such a novel approach, which is delete as many sensors as possible and just go vision. Novel solutions or novel problems. In this case, self driving cars. You know, no one has done it before. You have a bunch of different people trying different methods, mostly LiDAR or no LiDAR, I guess is two buckets we can think of. The the novel solution that T Tesla's going through, like you have nothing from history or the past outside of maybe AI in adjacent spaces, like uh, in, in, in other areas that can even tell you if this is a possible thing. And I think that's why there's so much hesitancy uh, from a lot of folks in believing this is possible because the, the problem is so crazy. And the solution is so crazy and the guy that's doing it is so crazy <laughs> sometimes that you combine these three things and it becomes like a black box nebulous thing that people are trying their best to navigate through but i think having people like yourself in arc you know doing the doing a lot of the let work and putting it out there for people to analyze and see hopefully i think will uh turn more eyes to this in earnest because i you know i, I think all, all three of us agree on this i think this is like I feel like it's inevitable, but it's hard to say with 100% confidence because it's never done before. It's just, it just, it seems like it's an inevitable uh, outcome. 